trade. And as a little bit of a tidbit of, that, of what I'm saying, this is a Jewish father who's bringing Mary worship to the Jews. But the pyramid structure is too easy for people to see, so they've taken the deception to another height. They've created what's called the spin principle, segmented polycentric integrated network. This is dim uh, and here the spin principle is demonstrated by New Age teaching institutions. What you do is, is you set up many little what look like grassroots organizations. They're all spinning the same direction. And then if somebody tries to take one down, all they get is one little node and the network remains. And here's another example of the spin principle. This is by New Age groups. And this next transparency no longer applies since about 1950 because they are merging all the religions together. But originally the Illuminati worked behind fronts. Satan's empires like an onion with layer after layer. And you have to peel it back. So the Illuminati uh, created and worked behind groups, mystical groups, which then in turn controlled and worked behind monotheistic groups. So Freemasonry behind Protestantism. Jesuits behind Roman Catholics, Frankists behind the Jews, Sufis behind the uh, Islam. Now we're going to go through these next transparencies very quick. Very quickly. Uh, they are part of a document packet I put together in 1990 and had for a while, but and, um, after offering them for a couple years, I think I got like one person who requested one. They're showing from their primary documents what they are trying to do. And here in this document, Manley Palmer Hall tells us that a secret governing body controls the globe, not the various religious governing bodies that pretend to rule. That's what I was trying to tell you with that diagram with the black uh, circle in the middle of the pie. And who is Manley P. Hall? Manley P. Hall was a grandmaster in the Illuminati, and he was also a grandmaster in Freemasonry. And here is the Scottish Rite Journal, journal's obituary of him, illustrious Manley Palmer Hall, often called Masonry's greatest philosopher. Now, this is from Alice Bailey. She wrote The Externalization of the Hierarchy, and she was head. <coughs> of Lucia's trust. <coughs> and Lucia's trust, as so many of you already know, is a publishing company. Uh, uh, Lucia's Publishing is a publishing company for the United Nations. And uh, <coughs> it was originally known as Lucifer Publishing and Lucifer Trust. And Alice Bailey created 140 New Age religions, and she worked for the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare in 1957, establishing educational goals that are now being implemented in the United States. For instance, Global 2000. And she, and she writes that Freemasonry will be the reli uh, universal religion. Other uh, New Age leaders, like Benjamin Krim, also say the same thing, that Freemasonry will be the a new universal religion. And she says that between the church and esoteric groups and Freemasonry, there is no disassociation between all of these. <coughs> this is just simply to show you that uh, the next quotes are coming uh, to you on the basis of the highest Masonic authority. This is um, ancient mystic oriental masonry written by Clymer a high-ranking Freemason. <clears throat> and he tells us that Masonry is connected to the ancient systems of priesthood. And he lists the different ancient systems of priesthood of the mystery religions. <clears throat> and he tells us that the Celts and the Brahmins and others, Ahura Mazda in Persia, and, and even the uh, Pharisees, your Levites, Curitus, Magi, Brahmins, Druids, they were connected by secret ties and intercommunicated from the Indus to the Tiber, from the Nile to the Thames, hence there ever has been 
is and ever will be Freemasonry on our planet. What he's talking about is that inner black circle I was talking to you about. In the ancient world, there were many mystery religions, and each of those mystery religions had their councils. But men from those councils got together in a supra council, council <coughs> that controlled it all, and that was the Illuminati. Now, a lot of you have never probably heard, heard much about that term before, so let's talk a minute about what the Illuminati is, what the word means. The mystery religions only went underground for a long period of time. But they all, the priesthood always continued. You can't find any point in history where they were extinguished. And in 1776, they reorganized themselves as the Illuminati. <clears throat> the Illuminati is a continuation of the mystery religion. As an example of that, when I met the Illuminati Grand Master, and now he's an Ipsimus in the Illuminati, in our northwest area, shook his hand. He had a ring on his finger. And if you go to Manley P. Hall's book, The Secret Teachings of All Ages, on page C, which is 100, you'll find that he says that a silver ring with a snake swallowing its tail it indicates rank in the mystery religions. And this Grand Master had a ring exactly like that. <clears throat> and here is uh, from Clymer's book again, and it says, So broad is the religion of masonry, and so carefully all sectarian tenets excluded from the system, that the Christian, the Jew, and the Mohammedan, and all their numberless sects and divisions may and do harmoniously combine in its moral and intellectual work with the Buddhist, the Farsi, the Confucian, and the worshiper of deity under every form. That's also a direct quote from Mackey's Masonic Jurisprudence. So you have two Masonic authorities there telling you the same thing, that Freemasonry is a universal religion. And here is Clymer again, and he says, Masonry is founded on the ancient wisdom religion, and when founded, was not known as Freemasonry. And here is something from Morals and Dogma. When you become a 32nd degree Freemason, they give you Morals and Dogma to read and, and to carry around. And, and if you uh, read in there, you will find that Albert Pike, who was the head of all Freemasonry in his day and known as the Pope of Freemasonry, says, Masonry is identical with the ancient mysteries. And this is from the Masonic House of the Temple in Washington, D.C., the Scottish Rites House of the Temple, and there's another room in this building, which is a 14 by 25 room with 13 chairs, where the Grand Druid Council of the Illuminati meets. And here's from another Freemason, high ranking, Foster Bailey. And he says, little as it may be realized by the unthinking Mason who is interested only in the outer aspects of the craftwork, the whole fabric of Masonry may be regarded as an externalization of that inner spiritual group whose members down the ages have been custodians of the plan and as those to whom has been committed the working out of the will of God for the race of men. They assist at the unfolding of the consciousness of the candidate until the time comes when he can enter into light and in his turn become a light bearer, one of the Illuminati who can assist the Lodge on high in bringing humanity to light. So he's telling us here that if you are... Uh, selected as a Freemason, you may be able to go on and be one of the Illuminati. Here are a few of our presidents who were Freemasons in their Masonic garb. George Washington, Andrew Johnson, and you see William McKinley there, and William Taft and Theodore Roosevelt, and FDR, and Truman, and Ronald Reagan. And here's Alice Bailey again in her externalization of the hierarchy. And she tells us that in place of Christi Christianity, the mystery religions will be restored by the church and free 